First of all, available to wishlist on Steam at number 1, we've got over here an open world action RPG and its developer's first work, a game Song of the Tides. Technically speaking, it's a pretty close call to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and the reason is simply because you go through different lands on a boat, fighting all kinds of folk to gather knowledge and better gear. That being said, I'm not even sure if there's a story behind all that, but it certainly looks pretty good. Song of the Tides is coming to PCs only by the end of the year. I was born on Earth, but I think I have been homesick for Europa my whole life. Moving on to number two, we have Europa. Technically speaking, this IP underwent the shadow of many games at its reveal, but first things first, Europa is an action adventure open world, just the same, that's halfway inspired by the game Baldur. One other half you could definitely say Breath of the Wild, with hints of Ghibli studio designs and even music. This game is now finally coming to PCs, both generation of consoles, including Switch, no longer in April as it was previously announced, but in the next couple of months. The gardeners have turned this place into a paradise. The sins of the past can stay home on Earth. Things will be different this time. They have to be. Peter, the head of production at Massive Damage, and I'm going to show you a little bit of our upcoming game, Pharah, The Sundered Tribes. If you haven't seen Pharah before, it's a combination of co-op monster hunting, open world survival craft, and a tribal colony sim with a heavy focus on aerial mechanics. Number three we have from a very good developer, in fact, the sole team who made Star Renegade, the dopest 2D, 3D turn-based role-playing game we came across last year. This is another really good-looking action RPG open world game, almost a Souls-like, going by the name Pharah, the Sonder Tribes. I think it's basically Phoenix Rising, some of you know that game, and like Monster Hunter and they had a baby, making all the monsters just a little more weird and random. Anyway, this game is coming to PCs and the next generation of consoles in the third quarter of 2024. Soaring in the air like your fighter jets. But right now we're on a mission to track down a Groktux egg, which we've located here. This is going to involve us fighting a large Groktux, so you can see a little bit of how combat works. Our combat design also retains that aerial focus, so in addition to physical attacks, our monsters also attack you with elemental bullet hell style barrages, which sort of test your mastery of Farah's aerial mechanics. In addition, you can also cling to the monsters and attack their different body parts, and even saw off craftable trophies mid-combat. But as I mentioned, today I am on a hunt for a Groktox egg, so while my friends have him distracted, I'm going to go find it. When the time is right, I'll be able to hatch the egg, and I'll gain a new addition to my beast menagerie, who I can then bring into the Underland to help me out in all sorts of ways. Sitting on Steam through Early Access for almost a year now, there's also a free demo for you to try too there. Number 4 we have Kaku, Ancient Seal. It's actually a first time mentioned over here. Kaku is in fact another open world action RPG adventure, definitely inspired by the game Kena. The difference however is the scale of the game, and I have to mention that Kaku has a rather interesting story, also overall puzzles and replay value. That being said, the graphics and mechanics are also super fun. Anyway, the full game set to be coming out around summer this year. Alona? Probably out there in the marshes right now trying to work off his debt to Chef Gutra. Number 5, we have here something called Hangry. It's a hack and slash action RPG, but what developers nicknamed as a snack and slash. So basically, Hangry puts you in the shoes of a big blue monster like the Beast from X Men, who happens to be some mercenary and has a hunger for hunting monsters that are scarier than himself. 
all around the universe. Hungry Angry is coming to PCs and Xbox consoles exclusively, probably by the end of the year, if not early next year. Go back here to Gutra's diner, a new spot in our shiny Zeta city. When you are in here, keep a sharp eye on the goons hanging around. They got ways of dealing with trouble troublemakers. So, watch for cheese, if you know what I mean. Dungeons of Hinterberg was just resurfaced with another trailer and a release date of July 18. Now this is the first work of its developers, I believe we mentioned it maybe once or twice, and if you missed it somehow, it is a modern day fantasy adventure with the aim to put the player in the shoes of a adventurous hitchhiker sort of life. It has pretty artistic themes of it, especially nature, and as developers set inspired by the Australian Alps, and there's also a third person combat. There's a lot of surprise going on with this one. Moving on to number 7, we have Soul Mask, coming to pieces exclusively late 2024. This game is described as a sandbox that prioritizes an authentic survival experience over anything. Meaning, uh, you start from nothing, explore, build, recruit men for your clan to fortify it, and ultimately the story is that you have to unravel the mysterious truth hidden behind the civilization of the warp itself, how it's run. Anyway, this is how it looks. Moving on to number 8, we have Astor, Blade of the Monolith. This game was announced a few months ago and now finally coming to PCs, Switch, and also other consoles on May 30, no longer in May 17. Developers announced additionally came up with another gameplay trailer, which was even better. It's a third person action RPG as you can see, spanning over 20 hours of campaign, what developers promise, along with an epic story, engaging gameplay, and very good visuals. Announced around November last year, now coming to PCs and all consoles within 2024. Number 9, we have an action-adventure RPG in the making here, maybe what you'd get by mixing Legend of Zelda and Elden Ring, and also more interactive, a game called We Kill Monsters, which I mentioned before. This is actually the work of Annapurna, meaning it's a very artistic game in nature, rather than an action one. It will also offer both a single and a multiplayer too. Take a look. Coming in at number 10, we have Eternal Shrans. Uh, this actually debuted around a week ago, in case you missed it. The game is an action-adventure third-person player inspired by the Monster Hunters, and 
The Shadow of Colossus, more to the point. It's the company's first work and this is its first gameplay trailer. Eternal Strands is made with the use of Unreal Engine 5 and is set to become a PC in the next generation of consoles only by the end of 2024. Driver, what news from Rhyme Home? If you like, there is a demo for you to try on the Nintendo eShop and also Steam and a full release of May 17 for Morbid, the game. Morbid, now retitled to Morbid Lords of Ire, is actually a Souls-like hack and slash RPG that started life over four years ago, almost five. It's inspired by the Dark Souls in Bloodborne. It's an action RPG, however, not in top-down, but in third person, bringing over the same goodness, a little bit incorporating Diablo games, just more of it and possibly smoother in gameplay. Coming from one of the best indie game developers in the industry are the same folks who made the game Epistory, Rotor Force and Gravity Sir, I'm pretty sure most of you know about them. Uh, we've got over here a 3D open world adventure, or rather walking simulator game going by the name Whisper, without a itch. And by that, it just says the story revolves around somebody who's into wisps. You're also a wisp. and. Honestly, that's all I know about this one. This game is coming to PC sometime next year, actually. Coming up behind that uh, is developer's first work over here, too. We've got a number 13 Dual Corp, which we mentioned only once a year ago. It's an action RPG to the 3D pixel art Souls-like, what developers promise to be a very different approach in combat, as you can see. It is this direction-based hack and slasher that offers both a single player and a co-op multiplayer. This is a demo for you to try on Steam. Dual Corp is said to be coming out fully by the end of the year, and this is how it works. Undermine is getting a numbered sequel for pieces exclusively, possibly due by the end of the year too. Undermine 2, remaining true to its original nature, gameplay, is an action-adventure roguelike dungeon crawler boasting more discovery, more combining, crafting, and a lot more relics with unique powers for you to pick up along the way. Not just that, you can actually go all the way solo or invite a friend to drop in for a two-player co-op through the entire game. Check it out in case you missed it.
And lastly, Project Terra is at the moment another one of the most underrated top-down roguelike platformers on the horizon. It was available through a beta, I think, maybe it still is, but it's said to be coming out sometime next year. The Project Terra, for those of you who missed it, has been in development for years now. It's as you can see a lot inspired by the cross-code games with really good visuals about just more freedom of choice. This game is also a PC exclusive.